Tryptophan is converted into NAD by the de novo NAD synthesis pathway. But as we saw in an earlier video, there's an age-related decline for vitamin B6, or more specifically, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, P5P, that may limit the conversion of tryptophan into NAD. And it's in support of that, we saw in that video that kynurenine levels increase during aging in conjunction with the age-related decline for NAD. So that raises the hypothesis, if I increase vitamin B6 intake, can I increase NAD? So for NAD test number four, I sent blood to Genfinity, and for those who are interested in doing the same, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. On that test, we saw that my NAD levels were 30.1 micromolar, which was going in the right direction when compared with test number one, 25.6 micromolar, and test number two, 25.3 micromolar. Now note that for test number four, my average B6 intake was 11.3 milligrams per day, and note that I track my diet every day. That's how I know the amount of B6 in my diet. So that 11.3 milligrams per day was significantly higher than, test for, than for test number one and two, 3.2 milligrams per day. So about a 3.5 fold increase in my average B6 intake. So with that in mind, for test number five, I then raised my average B6 intake, average daily B6 intake, about 3x higher to 37.2 milligrams per day. And that averages for the 32 day period in between test number four to the day for, uh, before test number five. So it did a further three-fold increase for vitamin B6, increase NAD, and actually it did not. So my data went from 30.1 micromolar down to 22.3 micromolar, and in fact, this is the lowest NAD level that I've had thus far over five tests. So to answer the question, did a further three-fold increase for vitamin B6 increase NAD, it did not. And in my case, vitamin B6, I think it's fair to conclude that vitamin B6, even over these past two tests, not just this most recent test, did not increase NAD. Now, all hope is not lost. As we saw in the last video, quinolinic acid levels increase during aging, which, which suggests that the block, the age-related block in this pathway, may actually be with quinolinic acid. So with that in mind, in that video, I focused on the conversion of quinolinic acid to NAD and how we may potentially impact that, which involves grape seeds or grapeseed proanthocyanidin extract. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NED quantification with Ginfinity, as I just mentioned, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing with Cyfox, which has a different panel than the at-home metabolomics, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other discount links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.